Yo, what's up? Just gonna take a walk. Had this conversation. Um, I've really, really been um, having some deep discussions uh, with a lot of people uh, based on this this subject. And um, I really believe that um, much of the issues that are that we deal with personally um, are hinged upon what we call generational curses. Um, when in all actuality, a lot of these things are basically behavioral patterns that are being repeated. And uh, the reason why these behavior problems are being repeated is because many of us have no blueprint. We don't have a blueprint. And the reason why we don't have a blueprint is because a lot of times the people, you know, uh, that may have been in our lives, our fathers, grandfathers, mothers, or whatever the case may be, we never learn their story. We never learn, um, you never learn their story, whether it be the good, whether it be the bad, whether it be the ugly. See, I was talking to a brother yesterday and I told him, I said, dog, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, tell me your mama life story. He said, what? I said, bro, don't tell me if your mama was a good woman. Don't tell me that she was a good cook. Don't tell me that, you know, she used to whip your behind when you got out of line. I said, tell me your mama life story. He couldn't do it. That's a bad thing, bro. <laughs> that is horrible. You want to know why? This is so horrible. This is horrible because it's a lot of things that it's a lot of things that we are attempting to do and we're struggling to do it because we don't believe in ourselves. You want to know why we don't believe in ourselves? Because we don't have a blueprint. You know wanna you wanna know why we don't have a blueprint? Because we don't know those who went before us and who were successful. We didn't get their story. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I, I want you to think about this. Do you honestly believe? Michael Jordan's great grandchildren will struggle with their personal esteem when it comes to whether they can do something. Nah. You want to know why? They got the blueprint of a very important patriarch in their family. See, they got the story on how, see, my grandfather, Michael Jordan, I know that he he played basketball and whenever he was in high school, he didn't even make the team. But he was able to take that and he worked and worked and worked and worked until he became who we know as Michael Jordan. See, they got the blueprint of somebody that they, they know I'm cut from that cloth. You understand? So you got family members that have done great things. They've done great things, but you don't know nothing about it. You have no idea because it wasn't talked about. 
it wasn't discussed. The information wasn't passed down. Now on the flip side, to what I'm attempting to present in this uh, video, there's a lot of mistakes that were made, whether it be your mama, whether it be your daddy, whether it be your uncles, your aunties, there were mistakes that were made. They were bad decisions. Now watch this. Them same mistakes that they made and them same bad decisions that they made, you making those mistakes to this day. You making those poor decisions to this day. You want to know why? Because your folks didn't take the time out to say, baby, look, let me tell you. When I was 25, when I was in high school, I did X, Y, Z, and it didn't pan out for me well. I did this, this, that, and the other, and that happened. this happened to me. And um, I wasn't able to, you know what I'm saying? These are the things that need to be shared. These are the things that the matriarchs and the patriarchs need to share. These are the things that you need to share with your nieces and your nephews, with your children. But one thing I've learned you want to know why? You want to know why our folks didn't share that stuff with us? You want to know why you're not sharing that stuff with your children? You want to know why you're not sharing that stuff with your nieces and nephews? Because you still held bondage to it. You still haven't healed from it. Guilt, condemnation, overwhelming you. And you still suffering from brokenness. That's the thing that happened. I made a post yesterday. I was talking about, I said, you want to know why granddaddy or papa you want to know why he didn't say much, why he was such a quiet man. He just went to work, came home, and would get out there and fix on that car. Or he spent all his time at the shot house. Or, you know what I'm saying, he secretly had a whole nother family across town. You want to know why? Because he had past trauma in his life that he still hadn't dealt with. He had past trauma in his life that he never overcame. And he was suffering in silence. He ain't say nothing to nobody. And that past trauma was literally eating him up. And that's the same thing that happened to a lot of our matriarchs. You know, some of the matriarchs that was busy all the time. They just busy, 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 busy. She just working, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. Doing something, always doing something, always going somewhere. Trying to take care of everybody. You know what I'm saying? You want to know why she was doing that? She was trying to navigate through life with unprocessed trauma. She experienced trauma and it wasn't dealt with. And so, with her trying to cope, that was just her way of trying to cope with that unprocessed trauma. And so, she can't, she couldn't sit down and talk to you about certain things because a lot of those different things, it provoked. It, it 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 touched triggers that brought her back to that trauma that she experienced. And so she just stayed far away from that stuff and don't talk didn't talk to you about it. And so what happened was 
that cycle continued. And a lot of us, we made those poor decisions or we experienced those things or we ran into those things because we didn't have a blueprint. See, when you deal with that trauma that you experience, and you overcome that trauma and you share your story and you talk about it, what you do is you give people blueprints. You give your children blueprints. You give your nieces and nephews blueprints. You live the people that get the opportunity to spend time with you. You give them blueprints. Every time you share your story, every time you talk about what you went through and what you, what you overcame, when you talk about not only the wins, but you talk about the losses in your life, the poor decisions that you made in your life, you give your nieces and your nephews, your children, you give them blueprints so that they can effectively navigate through life. They can navigate through the different things that they face. A lot of times, we create monsters. Let me give you an example how we create monsters. A lot of times, we as men a lot of the men that went before us they were what we call promiscuous men they were whorish men and unfortunately in our culture that celebrated you see what I'm saying and so there's this celebrated poor culture that we have and we pass it down and we talk to the younger men, you know what I'm saying? And we talk to them about all the hoes they got to have, right? Talk to them about having, you know, multiple women. You understand? And so you got young men here in the third grade talking about, I got three girlfriends at school. And, and the men like, for real? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And they like, and the young men like, oh, I'm getting celebrated for this. So he getting seventh, eighth grade. So not only does he have multiple young ladies that he's entertaining, he got multiple young ladies that he's having sex with, right? And then he gets 16, 17, and he got a baby from one of them. Then you get a baby from the other one. You know what I'm saying? I was uh just having a conversation with a little young dude I know. And he popped up one time with his brother. He's like, yeah, we one day apart. I said, what? Yeah, we one day apart. I said, oh, okay. That's what's up. I know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? But that ain't nothing that's, that ain't nothing uncommon. You know what I'm saying? But see, we we as men, we're celebrated for that type of behavior when we were younger. And we continue on that cycle. And so you got men that are married, they get married, and they struggling because they don't know how to function just dealing with one woman because it's been propagated and they've been celebrated to have multiple, you know what I'm saying? And not only have multiple women, but, you know, the celebration comes that, you know, you got to have hoes, right? I can remember one of the, one of the, phrases that we had that gave us a badge of honor when we would have a competition and we would talk about the fact that you know I bet I got more holes than you right and we go and talk to the to the OGs and we talk about all the holes we got and then yeah that's what I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about. So when do we 
when do we as men sit down and talk to the younger men about all of the drama that came with having all these hoes? When do we talk to the young men about the time our ties got cut because the young lady found out about the other females we had? When do the men that are paying out $1,400 a month in child support. You see what I'm saying? When do those men stand up and talk to these younger men like, dog, you know what I'm saying? I got X amount of children from X amount of different women and I'm paying X amount of dollars for child support. When are the men gonna say, look dog, that's not the lifestyle that you wanna live, little homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When do the women take the time out with the younger women? You know, because I want you to think about this. You got a lot of women, they save, spirit filled, love the Lord, go to church, all that other good stuff. But in they past, they was, they was, you know, they was passing it out. They was giving it away. They were liberal. You know what I'm saying? They was, they were giving that thing away. See what I'm saying? So it's very important that women that live that lifestyle at one time turn around and talk to their daughters, their nieces, their little female cousins and have that discussion and tell them. You know, look at baby girl. When I was your age, I was out there. You know what I'm saying? And it brought me heartache. It brought me pain. It caused me to, you know what I'm saying? Like, these stories need to be presented. You know what I'm saying? To the daughters, to the nieces, to the granddaughters. This information need to be presented because baby girl, she gets, you know, 15, 14, 15, you know, and, 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 you know, nature is taking place and she don't know how to process how she's feeling. You know what I'm saying? And then she turn around and she start becoming fast. And then you want to turn around and, 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 and dog out. And talk about her. And, and look, look at her. Just fast. Just out here just being fast. But you're not talking to her about when you was being fast. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't tell her about how whenever you was 14 and how you was, you know what I'm saying? You was doing your thing. You see what I'm saying? But see, if you were able to communicate that type of information with her, now she has a blueprint. Now she can see the patterns. You understand? And she can make some better decisions. She can turn around and say, OK, my auntie told me uh, she was in a situation like this and she was with a little boy and, and the little dude was telling her to do X, Y, Z. And she, you know, the little dude asked her, can he let her, can he let his friend, you know, can, you know, ask her, can she let his friend come in the room, too? You know what I'm saying? Like. That ain't nothing new. That ain't nothing that's that just started happening. You see what I'm saying? That's that what we could that's that's called a set out, right? Set set outs ain't new. That ain't new. You see what I'm saying? And so it's plenty of women that have allowed themselves to be set out. But because you hadn't healed from that experience. You not turning around and talking to your little niece, your daughter, about when you was a set out and how that negatively impacted you. You see what I'm saying? And so these little girls out here, they out here getting set out and they don't know what to do and they don't know how to process because, you know, a lot of times they just feeling like, you know, 
shoot a, you know, they just feeling like if they letting three, four little boys pounce on her, you know what I'm saying, she getting some attention. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, she feeling loved at that moment. You feel me? So she don't know how to process that experience. But during that time, she was able to get a need met. You see what I'm saying? She felt loved. She felt like somebody cared about her for the moment. So guess what? She went and did it again. But if she would have learned the story of her mama, of her grandmother, and look, I know grandma go to church and and grandma be reading her Bible. Grandma love the Lord and all that good stuff. I I I, I sat with an older lady, and I can remember her telling me. She said, she said she took me to she took me. I was I was over sitting at her house just sitting with her, and she took me over to the picture frame. She said, look, these are all my children right here, and she said, um, none of them got the same daddy. And I'm going to tell you why. She said, whenever I was a, a young girl, you know, I was just uh, I was just trying to, you know, find somewhere to stay. And, you know, I'd go to somebody cotton field and uh, ask, can I come and pick cotton? You know, and um, and I'd be out there in the field and the men would come by. And she said the, the men would come by and. And and she said, uh, this is how she said. She said, if he showed me a little attention, <laughs> read between the lines what she said. You know, she's basically saying if the guy showed her a little attention, she she gave it to him. You know what I'm saying? And she would end up pregnant. And that happened often. And that's how she got her children. And she says she lived like that very often. And that's how she was, you know, it was a survival. It was a means of survival for her. You know what I'm saying? Because she was hoping that the guy would would take her and, you know, be with her and marry her or whatever and take care of her. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of a lot of grandmas and great grandmas, that was their story. That's how they lived. However, in today's time, grandma in church and she reading the Bible and she she holy now. And now she just y'all need y'all y'all out there being fast. Y'all need to give y'all life to the Lord. Y'all need to repent. You're living unholy. You're living unholy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how grandma and her mother did dealing with, you know what I'm saying, the younger generation as, as opposed to, you know, grandma saying, look here, baby. I know what it's like to be out there and, and, and live like that. You see what I'm saying? But her living that lifestyle caused her to have a lot of trauma. And that trauma went untreated. It got it was unde it was never dealt with. It was never processed. You understand? Because she just pushed it to the side and and, and acted like it just never happened. You see what I'm saying? And she never got healed from that, that situation. She never was made whole from that situation. And so a lot of times what we do, we suffocate our experiences with a, with a whole lot of church and a whole lot of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We don't deal with it. We just kind of stack some Jesus and stack some church over it and we never deal with the situation so the trauma has never been made has never been dealt with and so as a result they cannot tell their story and because they don't tell their story they don't leave any blueprints for the generation behind them so I just want to encourage somebody. If you if you, if you got if you got trauma that you have not worked through that you've not overcome. I want to encourage you 
Take the time out. Share your story with somebody. If you need if you need some sort of counseling, if you need some sort of uh um if you need some sort of uh therapy, I want to encourage you to get that. You see what I'm saying? It's very important that you get that counseling, that 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 therapy. And that you share your 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 story. You talk about those instances that you had that were very traumatic to you, because a lot of people are just holding on to that stuff, and they're not talking about it, and it's literally eating away at their soul. And so, usually, when we are experiencing these types of things, we try to Jesus it away. We try to drink it away. We try to smoke it away. We try to uh, get out and work two and three jobs and stay busy it away. But that's not going. That's not going to deal with it. But I promise you, if you were to get the necessary therapy that you need, if you were to get the necessary counseling that you need, if you were able to process this trauma that you experienced, then it will give you the ability to talk about your experience and share your story. Because again, your story, it will be a blueprint for those that are coming behind you. You understand? I want you to think about, hold on, I got some comments coming in. What's the difference between stacking Jesus on it and actually dealing with with a problem? Thank you for sharing this. Okay, I get it now. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. So, it's very important that you be able to get the necessary counsel that you need and that the, that you get that you overcome that trauma so that you can share your story because you need to provide a blueprint for people. You need a blueprint to give to the generation that's coming behind you. It's important that you share your story because they got a lot of people, they see you in your glory, but they don't know your story. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, I don't really feel I need to share my story. You know, I could just, you know, just tell people, hey, you can do it. You see what I'm saying? So they see you in your glory, but they have no idea about your story. So they looking at you and they kind of like, well, you know, hey, that's just, you know, that's just for, you know, it happened for them. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they lucky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they lucky, you know. I'm on a uh I'm on a mission right now. I've been talking to a lot of the, the matriarchs and the patriarchs in my family, and I really have been prying to get information. And my reasoning for getting information is to because I need because I, I have patriarchs and matri- matriarchs that have done some phenomenal things. They have accomplished some great things. But a lot of those things, I had no idea that they did it. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, I learned a lot of the amazing things about certain family members. I learned those things reading the obituary. You see what I'm saying? And hearing the eulogy. You feel me? So I've been really prying a lot of the matriarchs and patriarchs to get information and some information came out about one of my family members. I'm going to be sharing it real soon. Uh, he actually was a civil rights leader, you know what I'm saying? Um, in the city of New Orleans and he did some amazing things and I will be sharing this information. Um, there's some phenomenal information, uh, about, you know, some people that I remember, uh, on the Mississippi Gulf coast you know what I'm saying? And they did some phenomenal things, but a lot of that information have been forgotten about. Again, because we don't talk about this stuff. We don't communicate these things. And I just want to encourage those who have been in, 
who have become victorious. They've won. You know what I'm saying? They they have wins in their lives. I want to encourage you to open up and share your story because we know that you didn't just pop up and become who you became. We know that you didn't just wake up one day and you just utilized your gift and you became who you became and you accomplished what you accomplished. No, there was some lows that you experienced. There was some pain that you experienced. There was some suffering that you experienced. There was some low times that you, you know what I'm saying? You went through and you had to push through that stuff in order to become who you became. And I want to encourage you to open up and share that information. So again, you can provide a blueprint for people for your family, for your cousins, for your children, there that blueprint is needed and I want to encourage you to share it. You feel me? So again, a lot of these what we call generational curses could be broken if we would indeed just simply share our story. Thank you for your time. Thank you for um hearing me out. I hope this was encouraging. Please share the information. Please apply the information. You be blessed and you stay blessed. Holla at your boy.